system up to a point in, in time where you're happy with, then you um, um, then you can use a normal scripts, which uh, is the best way of doing things. So you don't have to worry about these weights and just doing the final things. Um, yes, now as you can see, it's actually shut the system down now and system shut down. And this time, the final point, it's closed it, closed the connections, and it's now going to um, convert that file into a different format and, um, and um, compress it. Since. As you can see, I mean, it's just not going to be, again, everything's no wait, wait. It's time consuming, but the advantage is now, if you want to do a modification on this image, you can just edit this configuration file and you can have an image up and running again in 10 minutes. So it's time consuming the first time. Like, I don't know, automatically anything. When the script's working fine, it's great. And the advantage of this is, I know it's a keyboard and stuff like that. Scripts, you know, you're actually doing it on typing it in. Sometimes scripts you don't know what's happening, so this one's quite good. So the only problem is the waiting. And as I said, the same on his Slavis 11, there's nothing in there. Told where the file was, memory, CPU, and oh, his output. Is not, I'm not compressing it this time. It runs in scripts, and hopefully, and as you can see, the image is ready. And because the packer was creating, uh, in this case, virtual box, it deleted from virtual box as well because we just used it to create the image, and now um, the image doesn't exist any longer. So it, it, it cleans up afterwards. So now I have this image on this system, and I've got one a couple already up there, um, which now I can pass on to something else. Okay, there's something else. Okay, so now you've got the stage, you've got the, the image, you want to send it to your, your cloud. Now how do you get this uh, image to the cloud and how do you deploy it? So therefore you need to, um, that's where Bacon comes in. It, config, it allows you to configure this um, as, as, a, as a website, you know, which is from portable work environment. So, so. Again, using industry standard provisional tools. Again, being very bad, they haven't actually invented much. Everything's already out there. And they use Shell Script, Chef, Puppet, and a, a lot more. So they put it on, all under one hood. Um, it's like a car, isn't it? You know? Bring some company brings out a new car, there's nothing really, you know, they're not creating anything new, they put it together in a different way and added some bits to make it better. Which is good, that's the way uh, the world works. Again, developers, admins, uh, automated process. Cross platform, you know, it, can, it runs on Mac OS, Windows, and Linux. Um, but again, if you're deploying it, you don't care where it runs, you're only deploying it, you're not, you know, so. It doesn't run on Solaris. I'm using Windows here, but I can deploy a Solaris system. It, again, single file configuration. <coughs> I see the key thing of uh, Vagrant, which I've done is again, similar to the Packer thing. I've got lots of files, I want everything in one file. Simple as that. One file and one command. One single command to do all. Okay. It imports a base box, as I said, it's a create the box file into a standard format. Um, you can create your own, say, using Packer, which we just did, uh, which is most likely what you'd want to do anyway. You wouldn't want to go away and uh, use someone else's. But to play, there's lots of uh, virtual boxes out there already. Um, sort of virtual boxes, vacant uh, images out there already. One of the sites, uh, vacant, vacant 
Xbox.es has lots and lots of images already on there. Um, it's not only about eight operating systems, but images to do different things. You know, OpenBS, CentOS, Alien, or, and even all the Linux out there and stuff like that. So I mean, it's uh, Fedora and stuff like that. So it, it's you look at that it's a big list, and you you can download the image. Say, oh, this is. Um, <coughs> I don't know, I want CentOS and it's set up as a web server and all this, I can download this image, send it off, yeah, you know, like the old Linux one, or I can download the old Linux and all the database is already on it, that in that one, but in sense you can just download it, lots of images already there, so you don't need to use PAC, you can just download, and I did, you know, just download one of them, and it, um, again, I had an operating system, I've, I think it was CentOS, which I've never used before in five minutes, and uh, very happy. Um, there is a smart OS uh, image out there, which I uh, found out. They have actually, um, on the website, they actually have um, compiled Vagan to work on smart OS. And so um, I guess the older versions. Uh, but it does work, so you can actually use Vagrant on smart OS. I don't know if it's still true because it's always uh, increasing. Uh, so in a sense, they have the option. But there is actually an image out there, so you can actually download a smart OS image uh, from there and actually use that to create a smart OS. Yeah. Let's see. Okay. Um, actually... I um, yes, when the I. Download from that side. I, don't, I downloaded this. Uh, I wanted to install over Linux with Puppet and Chef. Um, I could install it and stuff like that, but the command vagrant box add Linux. That is a syntax to download somewhere for that and the URL. So I'm saying uh, start a vagrant box. Um, the Linux is just a label, a name. I call it Linux. And so where do I get this image from? And I'm going out there to get the image. Download the URL and successfully added this image to my virtual box. Um, there's no, that's just the ISO, I shouldn't use the ISO, it's the, the, the image box format. Um, you still need the Vagrant file, so again, the one line Vagrant in it, label Linux, and I have a Vagrant file there, and then the command Vagrant up Linux. You don't need, in reality, you don't need the Linux part if you're doing one image, but vague enough and that's it, and you get an image up straight away, um, and you have it. So one line is download something out there. Um, it's, uh, the vegan file for Solaris, I can say it uses Ruby again. Uh, a standard, it's not, it's not using its own language, it's using um, uh, Ruby and stuff like that, so again they, they, they're working on existing uh, structures. Uh, just in sense of version information, stuff like that. The key things there are, and those loops and stuff like that, and is, okay, where am I going to stick this, uh, the, the image at the end of it? It's going to stick in there exactly a local Windows system. Um, again, the example is taken from the web, so that's why the names, the box name, the guest, so actually indicating you have to tell us say, what operating system I'm using. You need to know that. The host name, because it will change, it can change it, because in a sense you've created an image, we may not have a host name in it, or we may have a host name thread, but you're deploying this now. So in a sense you want to give it a new host name. If each server, each uh, box you do, you will need to give it a host name, so you need that configuration. Um, where am I getting my box from? Again, locally in this system. Uh, this is more, I said, don't worry about the syntax that lies on the web. Uh, is okay. The VB GUI part equals true because default when you start VirtualBox, it, uh, when you run this, you don't get the GUI. You don't get the window will pop up. So I just that's the only reason why I said headless exactly. I'm deploying deploying in VirtualBox, but the same for everything else. So it's okay. Um, I need network. So you tell VirtualBox I'm going to use this network on NIC2. It's a NIC2 because on all them, NIC1's always defined internally uh, because you've uh, used it for the SSH and local, local loopback sort of thing. You can specify storage. 
In this example, I've set up uh, some extra storage and eight disks. I mean, the, the example on the web goes by creating tools, so in a sense, anything you can do in VirtualBox, which VirtualBox already provides, you can do this at the command form. You don't need all this tool. You could take virtual manager, disk, label, you could type all these commands. So again, they're not, so everything that VirtualBox or your, um, your environment provides, I'm sure the VMware, same thing. VMware provide all these things already. You add this into the, uh, into the, into the very good file, and it does it as if you were doing it on the fly, uh, doing it by hand. You're just telling about all the disks and stuff like that. Um, yeah, disk again, and finally, a virtual box uh, language creates hard disk, all these commands, storage, disk name. I think that is the, mm -hmm. the configuration. Slide, come on. Uh, I knew I should have touched that key. Gene slideshow, please. This. That's it. Three simple commands. Vagrant up, to bring it up, we said earlier. Vagrant halt, bring it shut down. And vagrant destroy. So you can deploy, halt, and destroy your work in three sim commands in any environment. So in a sense, if this is a VMware or somewhere in the Amazon cloud, the Vagrant up will handle everything for you. It would send the uh, stuff over to your image because of everything in the Vagrant file, in the uh, Vagrant file, and does it. So in a sense, it's in a one line. Okay, you've got to get the configuration file correct. It's better than scripting because with scripting, it's, it's doing a lot of scripting for you. What's the difference between scripting and a file in terms of configuration? So therefore, you've got something testing your files and stuff like that. Now, let's see if I will go to this one. Actually. See if it says works on. So this is with his uh, example. Uh, nothing in there very with the one I'm, example I'm using. The blacks, no, basically no real information there at all. Basically the only thing I say, network. I don't bother with a host name. I use the default host name, okay, it's not the way, but I mean, so therefore you can do it. Oh no, I do have a host name. Sorry, yes, I didn't realize. So again, I'm saying it's, a Solaris, even though it's not Solaris, but you know, you're telling Vagan says, what options am I? It's definitely not Linux. Uh, so you're telling what's available. Um, and the timeout is actually the, how long it takes to actually before everything should be up and running and stuff like that. So I, I give it, oh, it is commented out, I thought it was a stranger. It's uh, host name, where the box, and make sure I see it, and specify a network card. And Actually, what, just to prove that it works, why not uncomment that I and, wonder, cha and change the hostname? I wonder, is there a reason why I did that? How about but changing the hostname to something unique? <laughs> Let's see, the uh, right directory, yes. Interesting to see. It, it all depends. This is the reason, I think the reason why it won't work. Uh, Let's see in the directory. Uh, where is the uh, no? Is it gems? Uh, I think it, it, it's. Uh, oh, I can't find that. I don't know where it's actually. It needs a template for that, and I think with this one is it's a Solaris, uh, the wrong template. Uh, in Solaris 11, it uses, you don't use the accept a host name any longer, and I think that's the reason um, why. But let, I'll, I will 
do exactly what you told me to do anyway.